Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Red Grizzle here, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, about vitamin B9, otherwise known as folic acid. So, right, you up here, folic acid. Folic acid. And it's vitamin B9, it's otherwise known as. Okay, so what is the main sort of function of vitamin B9? Well, it aids, aids in the production of DNA and RNA strands. Um, well, I, I may have discussed that in a previous video. Um, oh, obviously DNA is a double-stranded molecule which um, it, it basically contains a genetic code which can code for particular proteins, polypeptide molecules and different characteristics. If you watch my protein synthesis video actually, that can show you how, how the actual language of DNA is converted into the, the, the sort of, form of format of um, polypeptides and, and how that can code for particular proteins. Okay, so it aids in the production AIDS production of DNA and RNA. Okay, so that's one of the main functions. Another one is that it actually is involved in the manufacture of red blood cells, so making red blood cells. Right, so this, so this is an interesting point, making red blood cells. So what is the main function of red blood cells? Well, we know that red blood cells contain something known as haemoglobin, and this haemoglobin molecule assists the transfer of oxygen around the body. Um, so obviously, it, as this is involved in the manufacture of that, it, if there wasn't enough folic acid in the body, it means that there wouldn't be enough blood delivery um, to particular muscle cells and stuff. And obviously, well, when I say blood delivery, if the blood doesn't get there, the oxygen obviously isn't going to get there either. So the blood is what transports oxygen. So that can lead to symptoms such as fatigue and stuff, because as we discussed before, you need oxygen for uh, respiration of your muscle cells. Um, okay, so, so what can deficiency of this um, lead to then? Well, well, as I've just said, it can can lead to um, it can actually lead to fatigue. So right, deficiency up here. So fatigue is a more sort of obvious one. A lot of deficiencies can lead to fatigue, uh, but there's also a number of different other less obvious uh, deficiency symptoms and these include things such as um, celiac disease what, which is the, your body's inability to process gluten so, so foods obviously to contain gluten are things like bread um, other carbohydrate type foods like that um, that's the main sort of source of gluten um, and, and it means you need to actually buy special types of bread that can be quite expensive and stuff so obviously it's not ideal to have this deficiency just because it's that, that's, um, that's mainly the, the celiac disease is mainly sort of an inconvenience to everyday life um, and another one could be alcoholism um, which, which is essentially if you become an alcoholic or something then, then that, that is what ha not having enough of this like, like can actually lead to alcoholism so it, it can lead you to want more alcohol um, shortness of breath again that sort of ties in with fatigue it can also lead into diarrhea as well, but a lot of minor, minor, minor like deficiencies of particular vitamin B forms um, can lead to um, can lead to diarrhea as sort of a minor defect. As I've discussed in my previous videos, a lot of them can actually lead to that. Uh, okay, so what are the daily requirements for this particular vitamin? Um, for this vitamin, it cannot be synthesised by the bacteria in the body. Like I said, with vitamin B8, um, that can be synthesised from the bacteria in the body but this one can't so you actually need to consume it so you need to consume uh, if you're 19 plus and you're an adult male you need to consume around 400 micrograms so this is only sort of a rough estimate um, because obviously it, it does vary from person to person because cause, cause certain body c certain people can cope with, with different amounts but as a sort of recommended like, like daily allowance for um, the average person that it would be around 400 micrograms um, when this is taken into consideration their age so obviously when they're fully grown 19 plus is, is when they're an adult um, the other thing you should probably know is you should probably note that overconsumption can lead to weakness tingling, muscle pain uh, t sorry, tongue pain and confusion um, so overconsumption, I'll make a separate heading here overconsumption Um, inflamed tongue get that correct spelling 
um, okay, so, so, so that can lead to actually tongue pain and stuff like that. Um, can lead to confusion, weakness, and tingling. Okay, so confusion, weakness, and tingling. Uh, okay, so we we can see sort of the defici the deficiency and overconsumption. Um, uh, uh, actually, the overconsumption and deficiency symptoms can be in many ways tied in, like, like from from the point of view of fatigue. Um, obviously, confusion, tingling, uh, and weakness is, is essentially similar. So, if you have too much of it, it can can l actually lead to a similar effect as if you have not enough of it. That ca that may seem like a strange sort of concept, but but like actually, if you think about it, if it's involved with the actual production of red blood cells if you if you actually consume too much it can also lead to a defect in that manufacturing process of the red blood cells um, uh, okay so that's sort of primarily what I want to talk to you about um, it's actually used in particular treatments as well I should probably mention so like anemia which um, if you've heard of, of the term sickle cell anemia that's essentially what, where like red blood cells actually change their shape so they can't actually fit through the blood vessels as they go into smaller and smaller blood vessels as you're probably aware already, like well, once the blood is taken away from the heart via arteries, um, that these arteries then split into small arterioles and then they split into like capillaries. And uh, and like the point is that these blood cells in diameter they gradually get smaller and smaller. That therefore, if the blood cell shape is affected, for example, uh, uh, as it is in sickle cell anemia, sorry, um, when they actually get towards those capillaries, they're more likely to like get stuck if, if they're the wrong shape. H hence why you, you don't get as much um, oxygen delivery to your particular muscle cells, etc. Um, okay, so that's tr is, is using the treatment of anemia, which is, as, as I've just said, like, to do with the shape of the red blood cells. Um, it also affects the bowel. Now, the bowel is just a term like, like given to the intestines, mainly. Um, and, and the intestines, as you should be aware, is that they're actually used to absorb particular nutrients. They're actually used to absorb the majority of the nutrients in the body. Um, uh, and they're obviously adaptive for this because they have like, a large surface area but the point is that the bowel actually becomes inflamed um, that the bowel can become it can become inflamed and if it becomes inflamed it, it, it cannot absorb nutrients properly whereas if you actually have enough of this vitamin um, you, you can actually prevent you can prevent the, the bowel being, becoming inflamed and therefore not being able to absorb enough stuff I should probably mention as a deficiency symptom um, inflamed bowel because essentially if you don't have enough of it, it can lead to an inflamed bowel. So, sort of the treatments are almost like the opposite of the deficiency. Because obviously, if you've got an inflamed bowel, uh, if you have enough of it, it's going to be involved in the treatment of the inflamed bowel. Okay, so that's um, so that, uh, that's what is sort of involved in the actual treatment of. It's, it can also be it can also prevent colon cancer and cervical cancer. Um, so, preventing colon slash cervical cancer cervical cancer okay so basically um, as I've just discussed before it's quite similar to, to the actual bowel um, like defects that I've just discussed with you because um, like your colon is a part of your large intestine um, and, and essentially that, that's involved in the sort of reabsorption of particular nutrients such as salts and stuff mainly in the large intestine I think um, so, so essentially it prevents a, any sort of problems with that um, if you have enough of it, obviously deficiency symptoms might be you actually get colon cancer because it's the complete opposite. It, it's more likely to lead to um, a lot like cancer. You know, you should know that it's a mutation uh, with genetic information. Um, so, so what that means is that if you have enough of this, it will prevent the actual genetic mutations by enabling nutrients to be absorbed effectively and properly as the body would um, require. Um, so, 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 so I, ho I hope you found this video um, useful and I'll speak to you in the next video about a little bit about vitamin B10 um, which I'm going to have a, a sort of fun time trying to say the name of that because it's quite a long confusing name. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Goodbye.